The one thing that you need to know and to do and to feel like uh, a billionaire or smell like a billionaire is... So, uh, we're going to talk about layering today. The concept of layering basically means a fragrance over another fragrance. Okay. It's as simple as that. As you are DXP perfume and you are in Dubai, I have to show you how we do it in this part of the world. You want to try and combine families that work. And the beauty is, it doesn't have to be, it is quite gender neutral. It doesn't have to be that masculine goes with masculine or feminine with feminine. Of course, that's a safer way to do it, but that is not the only way to do it. So, go on, give it a choice. What, what, what would you like to go for? And then I'll explain how we go through the layering, how we do it over here. Where you can layer two fragrances to give an effect of a third, which is personalized, it's individuality in your own. And then over a period of time, the more you use it, it becomes a signature scent. So everybody remembers, you leave the elevator, and say, oh, well, Hassan has been here. So, should we try this? Yeah, yes, okay, superb choice. So, Amber Santal, let me do, in the case of Amber Santal, it's got the dry grey ambriness. There is this uh, acridity to it. It's woody, but it's warm. It's really, really nice. Because we we'll start with the stronger of the two. Uh, where, where do you have some skin available? Okay, so you start with that. The other thing a lot of people do, which you shouldn't, is people tend to, and it's been it's been popularized by movies. You know, they put on and then they do this. You should never rub your fragrances because you get rid of the top notes of the fragrance, which are beautiful as well. Evoke, very powdery, floral. It is a, it is a, well, it is branded as a female fragrance. I personally wear it. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. And I think it goes very well with Amber Santal. So, there you go. Just give it a, a few seconds, let them settle on each other. You see how the blend works? So neither of them are overwhelming. They, they have to complement each other. That's why I said you know, it's a trial and error process. It smells like an umbery floral blend. Absolutely. And it, it is gorgeous, it has got great bloom, and of course, lasting would be phenomenal. So give it time. Rich deep fragrance is coming out. There you go. Thank you very much. Right. You saw it here first. Yeah. Yeah, you saw it here first. The XP. <laughs> <laughs> so that works. They do the moonwalk out. <laughs> <laughs> so, Mer, I know that you like Orientals. I do. Right? Yeah. So, what we're going to do is we're going to swap the order. We're going to start with an Oriental. Okay. It is a floral. But having said that, it is not that sticky, uh, very, very feminine. Eventually, that's not the effect that we are going after. The effect that we're going after, and let's start with one after the other. So this will give you a little bit of a rosy, uh, this clean area, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So you, when you smell this, you get, initially you get a little bit of fruity florals, right? That's the, that's, Normally, that's the nature of the sal zahar as such. But having said that, that's not the final effect we want. We want an individualized effect, which is absolutely you. So tomorrow when you walk down the street or whatever, you recognize that way. So we've got blue. Blue is a very, very fresh, aquatic, beautiful fragrance for daytime, summer, etc. But when it's blended with something like the sal zahar, it has a complete different aura, right? It's now more floral. It's got a little bit of sweetness, but it's not the sticky, icky sweetness. It's, and it's fresh. It will last for really, really long. And there is a woodiness in blue, which is not very overt, but the woodiness of Wissal Zahab will drag it long. And of course, the overall muskiness will make sure that it lasts for hours and hours and diffusion is awesome. Great. Nice? Yeah, yeah, fantastic. Yeah, I've got a great that one. That does well. I put my trust in you. Oh, well, there you go. Safe hands. Thank you. We go for a classic, which is amber wood. But amber wood is quite potent in nature, right? So let's imagine you're going for a meeting somewhere 
You want to wear amber wood, but amber wood could be quite strong, especially in UK, where spaces are, are, are sort of small. You're wearing jackets, so the fragrances, you could be in close proximity. So you want to give the effect or you want to exude amber wood, but not at the same kind of strength. So you need something to soften it and bring out the freshness. Now, the most important thing about amber wood is the pineapple note, right, to begin with. So let's start, we got this area free. So you have the, you have the pineapple, so the freshness that comes is pineapple, right? Then is that cool alpine-like feel that you get, and then it all settles into the ambriness, which is the part which is great if you like it, not so much if you are affected by strong fragrances. So what do we do about that? We want to use it and at the same time soften it as well. So we go for something like a Kuro. Kuro has a velvetiness in its overall nature. Right? It's fresh and it has got all the elements that give it a softness to it. So overall what it does, it softens the, uh, the strength of amber wood. Right? It kind of veils it. And then the amber wood will keep coming through, but it won't be as strong, as potent. People would want to know what it is, but will never be able to identify one or the other. And that's the whole idea of uh, uh, layering. I personally think more than layering is personalization. So when you layer more than one fragrance, you personalize it. I've talked about it many a times to many friends that I encourage it. Why? Because then that way you finally end up with an individualized fragrance. You are recognized or as I say, a signature fragrance. So people recognize you, oh, that's his blend. I mean, what could be more uh, complimenting if people say, oh, I recognize this brand. So I'm glad you like it. I think it's great, actually. Super. And I also, just to add to that, I think like normal customers or perfume lovers, they're often confused somewhat by the layering process. Yeah. But you've very easily been able to put together two perfumes which complement each other. Yeah. Well, like I said, it is, it is a process of trial and error. Yes. And uh, it, it is something that one should take a step at a time. You should always pick fragrances that make you feel good. Okay, eventually the idea of a fragrance is make you feel good. And then you see how you want to try them around. And as I uh, always believe, and, and we know that, so a layering, if, if, if we swap that order that we did with you, the effect would be a fourth. Yes. So you can actually have three or four fragrances yeah. when you have two. Very true. So that's Very true. Well. So just to add, also, all of our perfume consultants at DXP Perfumes are specialists in the layering process, so they can help you find your own signature scent. Super. Thank you. Good luck. Normally, the uh, fragrance would either go on my skin is this or how, on top of this. Is this how you leave this trail behind? Yeah. Because of it, sir? Because of that, yeah. How often do you do this? Uh, uh, locals, Arabs do it every day. Daily. Daily. So in the morning, the ritual is that uh, men, it's slightly different now, I'll explain to you. Give me a second, let me just. Okay, so you know when it's just about to start burning, the timber comes through. Right. You have to stop, you know? So, do you, you want to get a whiff? Yeah. Have, have a whiff. And this will give you an idea step by step how it will change. Okay? Very, very woody, very smoky. And of course, we continue with Amir. Amir is our latest launch. Very oriental, very Arabic. Uh, goes very well with the incense notes of oud, etc. And so, the one thing that you need to know and to do and to feel like uh, a billionaire Arab, smell like a billionaire Arab, is be extremely generous when you're wearing fragrances. That's the trick. And is that, sorry, just on the clothing or would you put it on your skin and the pulse points to... Uh, you would wear it, it, it all depends. I have something called an M formation. Okay. I, I, when I've showered, deodorant, done everything done before I wear my clothes, if I'm going out, 
then I wear fragrance in an M formation, which means I start from my hand like this, yeah. I go down my torso, come back up, and then complete here. That's an M formation, I call it an M formation. And that's on my skin, and then wear my clothes. And if I want the layering to be, then I could uh, put, uh, burn the incense in the jacket, or if it's already got incense in the shirt, or last thing, which again will happen now, winter comes, is actual oil of root, little bit, just behind the ears. Or just around the beard or something like that. What sort of longevity should we expect to get out of the fragrance once the mahood has been burned and the spray has been applied? See, nothing actually aids each other to, to elongate the, the longevity, unlike musk. So if you were to layer yourself with the musk fragrance first, and then put some other layer it with the fragrance, then you can expect that to last longer than it normally would. Anything like this, it's very, very difficult to say because it is a chemical process, it's a mix, right? So some fragrances may not last as long, but mostly our fragrances, you shouldn't get anything below eight hours. On the skin. On, on the skin, you're, you're moving cold. around, etc. Which I think is, is very fair. Because lab conditions, Nothing is acceptable unless it lasts for 24 hours in lab conditions. So, there you go. Thank you.